we did um, last week, if you guys remember, um, we did these drawings where we started kind of like a shallow pinch pot and we went across and then we just kind of kept the pen moving and we started to create these kind of lines that have some rhythm and some movement to them with the hopes that they would start to kind of represent some coils. We want to be thinking about the different types of coils that we can make. We've got some spiraled coils. There's some um, vertical coils that kind of uh, just go down and back up, down and back up. We have some horizontal coils that go all the way around the entire pot. There's also coils that start and stop within like a quarter of a um, a quarter of a circumference. So there's one that starts right here and then another one that's kind of overlapped on top of it and then another one and they kind of just end back at this horizontal one. Then there's a spiral that's been fitted. So what I'm trying to do with this piece is I'm trying to create some rhythm. I'm trying to create some variety as well with the lines. So a variety of lines placed in a way that kind of creates some rhythm in the way that it's kind of moving through the piece. Okay, you can also see that the form is not just a straight up and down uh, like flower vase kind of kind of uh, Jamon pot. It has some uh, some kind of uh, shape to it that that changes directions, um, and that uh, goes along with the with the curves in the in the lines. Okay, so I'll move this one out of the way. Got another one right here to show you. This one I actually made into a pitcher, but you can see that there's some more spirals here. I have some some coils that that go all the way around. And then I have some that have just kind of been strategically placed in a way where they they start at a spiral and end at a spiral. And they kind of go around, they go up. I've got some up here that are short, curved, uh, some that, that are kind of like serpentine, the way that they go around. So lots of different types of coils that I'm using here um, to communicate a variety and rhythm. The very first thing you need to do in order to get started with your coil pot, obviously you need clay. So you're gonna need to take your clay, you're gonna need to cut off a, uh, a, a little piece of clay that's maybe about the size of a golf ball, maybe a baseball, somewhere in that range. So I'm gonna cut off a brick, then I'll take my brick, and I'll just go ahead and cut that in half. All right, set that right here. Actually, I want this bigger one, I think. Yeah, that's, that just feels better. So I'm going to start this as a pinch pot. So you guys remember how to do this. You just smack the heck out of the ball of clay back and forth in your cupped hands until you get a ball. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Okay, I don't wanna to go too thin on this though because this one's gonna be holding up everything. This is my base, okay? I need a good base for my coil pot. So I actually want this to be more flat than I want it to be rounded on the bottom so that we don't have to add a foot. Okay, if you guys remember back to last week, we learned about the Jamon coil styles. The early Jamon period, they would use pointed bottoms or rounded bottoms. And over time, they, they developed a more flat bottom shape that was better for cooking and for storing. So they, the vessels would hold on their own. So what you could do is you can just take your pot and you can just kind of flatten it like this. So it's flat on the bottom. Okay, so flat on the bottom doesn't doesn't mean that it has to be flat on the sides. In fact, if you make it flat on the sides, it's gonna be kind of a funky shape uh, when you start moving up, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I like to make mine flat on the bottom and then kind of let them flare outward a little bit so that they're starting the shape going out. Okay, it doesn't have to be a very dramatic um, outward shape, just you know, just a little bit of outward shape is fine. Okay, so you can see that the bottom is flat. 
And what I like to do as well is I like to flip it over like this and make this top lip nice and flat so that when I'm starting my first coil on top of it, it has a nice level base. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna set that aside. No, over here. No, over here. Oh, where do I put it? How about right here? That seems like a reasonable place for it. All right, I need some more clay. How about that piece I cut out earlier? Just wiggle that out. There we go. Okay, super. All right, so now I have a piece of clay here. It's probably way more than I need right now, but I can kind of do a couple coils with this, so that's all right. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna make it into a log, or like one of those uh, candy bars, uh, like a Snickers, or a Milky Way. I like the Milky Way dark chocolate. That's a good one. That's a real good one. All right, so here we go. We've got this log. I'm just kind of trying to start it off really, really nice and easy. Give, set myself up for success so that when I'm rolling my coil, it just makes it a lot easier if I've got a, got a head start on it, okay? So I'm just kind of wetting my surface because my surface is very porous, meaning that it will suck all the moisture out of my coil. So I wanna make sure that I don't, you know, end up with a dry coil that's gonna crack a ton. So remember, from your fingertips to your palms, you're gonna be rolling back and forth. Notice how my hands are going kind of on this like circular motion. They're not doing this, right? I'm not, it's like more like that, okay? And the reason why is because our hands, we wanna to try to create this rounded shape to create a rounded coil. As the coil gets thinner, we need to move our hands closer to the board. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a oval or a rectangular shaped coil. And while that's not an awful thing, it's not a, maybe necessarily a bad thing, that's probably not what you guys are going for. So let's learn how to do a, a nice round circle. Okay, if you didn't catch that, I cut that in half. It was really long and I can make two with it. All right, so that's a pretty good coil, all right? I've been doing this for a while, so I can make a good coil. You guys are beginners, so you might struggle with this. All right? Just keep going, just keep trying. Don't stop believing, okay? You can do it. it. Takes practice. Nobody's gonna be good on like the very first try. And if you are, then good job, all right? Awesome. Um, you're probably not gonna be good at everything on the first try. And if you are, then maybe you should teach the class, right? I'm out of here. I'm joking. Okay, so let me bring our pinch pot back into the into the uh, in the plate. No, no, over here. No, over here. Okay, um, let's let's just talk about uh, just a flat coil, just a regular horizontal all the way around coil. So if we wanted to start off with one of these, we could absolutely do that. Does this remind you guys of anything we've done already? Hmm. Yeah, that's right. You guys are all thinking it out there. The foot ring. Remember when we put a foot ring on the bottom of our first pinch pot? Something like that. Well, it's kind of like the same thing almost, except we're putting it on top. So I'm gonna start this one off with a really simple, easy peasy, horizontal coil, okay? So this is here. I can use this to cut it if I wanted to or if I wanted to use my wire tool, I could cut it. Just don't cut through the pinch pot. I almost did. So then uh, at this point, you're just gonna join these together. If your clay is super soft, you can just join them together, just blending them. However, you guys are beginners. So when it out, scratch it out. Sometimes you can scratch without even wetting it. You just scratch it and compress it and you're on the right track. Okay, when the clay is super soft. My clay is currently super soft because I just got it out of the bag 
and I didn't spend 20 minutes trying to roll a coil. But for you guys as beginners, you guys might spend 20 minutes trying to roll a coil, and it might be hard um, or, or not as soft. So if that's the case, you're gonna have to probably add some water to it. So watch what I do. I'm gonna cup the outside with my hand, okay? And with my opposite thumb right here, this little guy, I'm actually gonna, right inside, I'm just gonna blend the clay down. Okay, let me find my, my sponge. So you see that? I'm blending downward. Taking this coil and I'm blending it. I'm not just smoothing the surface. I'm not taking like a paintbrush and putting slip in there. I'm not like just kind of like gently making that line go away. I'm literally smushing the clay downward. The whole point here is we're trying to make these two pieces of clay into one piece of clay. And the reason why I'm cupping it carefully with my hand right here like this and not doing it like doing it with uh, pressure back here like that is I don't want to press in and damage this coil right here. You see, we, we're going to use these coils on the outside to create the decoration. So you can see the outside of this coil pot. It's got all these designs on it. The outside of this coil pot has all these designs on it, but the inside is completely, completely smooth. I'm blending the coil down carefully, uh, careful not to, to mess up the outside, but I'm actually smushing this down. I'm making sure that I've got one piece of clay that's being joined together to another piece of clay, and now they're becoming one. When you're done blending that in, you want it to, to look something like this. There's no evidence on the inside that there has been any addition. You want the inside to look like it was just a pinch pot that you pinched out. But on the outside, we've got this evidence of a coil. We wanna keep it that way, all right? So at this current stage right now, I've got some scratch marks. So you wanna be careful when you're scratching, not to scratch as, as, as much as I did. So you can see how I scratched it in a way that it it's causing uh, the scratch marks to still be in view. But I can take a, a paintbrush and I can just kind of run that through here and smooth it out. This also helps to eliminate any opportunities for cracks to happen. Sometimes this is easier to do when the clay's a little bit more fur. So I would go all the way around and do that. I'm not gonna do that right now because you guys are, you guys are right there. You're just waiting for me to do the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Uh, I'll take this bag. I'm gonna wrap up this piece just for a little bit because I don't know how long I'm gonna be. I don't know. It might be a while. So that's how you would join a coil on. I wanna show you how to make other types of coils. If you're not sure what types of coils to do, look at your sketches that you did last week. Look at all those rhythmic lines and just figure out how you can do that with the coil. So I got a coil right here. Get this bag out of the way. Come on, bag. Get out of my way. Roll this coil. Get it nice and rounded. If you have rings like me, okay, you might have a little ring mark on all your coils. You can take your ring off if you want. That's fine. Just don't lose it in the clay. If I fire your ring in the kiln, I don't think your ring will survive. I've got a coil right here. What if I wanted to make a cinnamon roll? All right, well, I'm going to Roll on one side for a little while. Just kind of hang out over here on this end. So I got like this kind of carrot shape where it tapers. With this taper. Now what I'll do is I'll just take this thin end right here and just kind of roll it on itself. And I'll just kind of keep rolling it. How big of a cinnamon roll do you want? You want one of those cine minis or do you want one of those large ones? How about a large one? I think a large one's good. We need to blend the back of this. So decide which, which side is the back, okay? Which side is the back? Is it this side or is it this side? Well, it's up to you. Take it, put it in your palm and blend it. We need to make sure that this is all becoming one piece on the backside. You might think, oh, I'm not gonna blend it. Mystery doesn't know what he's talking about. 
It doesn't look good, blended. Nobody's gonna see the inside. <laughs> Only gonna see the outside. Or you might say, no one's gonna see it. It doesn't have to be blended. Well, it's not about whether or not it's gonna be seen. Really, what it's about is when this um, shrinks, if you don't blend it, um, what'll happen is this can unravel and it can crack. So you want it to be blended really well so that it's nice and, and uh, unified on the back. All right, so I'll go ahead, go ahead and set that aside. Let's look at another shape we can do. I can take my coil and I could just bend it. Back and forth. Kind of like an intestine or a radiator. There you go. Sha na 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 na. Hmm. All right, so we what do we want to do to the back side of this? You blend it. That's right. We want to blend it. So I'm going to turn it over. You know, maybe you're not sure which side is the back side. We'll pick the side that's, the, that's not as good. Like this one's all squished already. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in my palm, nice and gentle with this hand and nice and firm with my thumb over here. Blend this together. I don't want to have any evidence of coils on this side. I want it to just look like a flat piece of clay, basically. Now I've got this kind of M shape. And I've got this cinnamon roll, okay? These could go together any different type of way, you know? Lots of different ways that can go together. All right, so let's think of another shape I can make. Get my hands nice and wet here. Well, let's look at my drawings that I did earlier. What's I can do... Well, that'll be a good one. So maybe I want to take coil and make it kind of like a double-ended carrot where it tapers on both ends maybe it's more like a, like a string of string of peas or green beans or a mustache all right so or a banana here we go boom now let's make another one to fit inside. Ooh. Ooh. You guys feel bad for the people that are sleeping in right now? Missing the demo? I feel bad for them too. So sad. So sad. Their, um, their coil pots, hopefully they don't fall apart. Hopefully they don't fall apart. You know, sometimes people who don't watch the demo, they don't know how to join their stuff together. And they just think they can just stick it like that. So, hey, look at that sticks on there. Wow, that's cool. It sticks now when it's wet. But when this dries, it will not stick together like that. These will come apart. Maybe they'll stick together for a little while. When you go to pick it up, it's gonna fall apart. Okay, so if I get a text, or not a text, but an email from one of you guys, like, Mr. E, my piece fell apart. Oh, it did? Did you blend it together on the inside? Well, no. Oh. Well, there you go right there. So make sure you blend it. When you're making pieces like this, it's best to blend them before you put them together. If you attach them to your pinch pot, or to your coil pot, sorry, and you haven't blended these together yet, then you're gonna be um, putting a lot of pressure on all of the joints that you made. All of those little seams that you blended together, be pulling it apart, you're gonna be creating weak spots. You guys might say, wow, Mr. Strata, those are some beautiful shapes. You might say that. You're not saying it. Oh, man. So sad. Aw, oh, thanks, Felipe. These are cool shapes, huh? You're so kind with your words. 
Just making sure you guys are there. Where else would you be though, right? What if I started with the ball? Here. Yeah. What if I wrap the ball with a circle? Ooh, that's kind of like what we saw those Jamon people were doing with their pots. Didn't we? Didn't we see that? I want this to be a continuous circle on the front. So I'm going to try to blend that together. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. You guys might notice that everything I've done so far, except for the base, started off with the coil. Also, you can't see this on the video, but this coil is starting to get a little bit cracked right here. That's okay. Don't worry about it. It's all good. These are just surface cracks. All right, if you start really working it, it's probably gonna break. But uh, just don't do that, okay? What if I did this? What does that remind me of? That reminds me of something. Hey, look at that. Look at that. I kind of like that, you guys. I'm going to let my sponge be my hand this time. Okay? So I have it right here. Blend these together. Yeah, these are harder to join together because they're all individual pieces and they're all flat and straight. And there's five individual pieces. So I'm going to, I'm doing them one at a time here. And the downside to this shape, like this, is that I'm losing the, I'm losing the uh, intensity of the coils like the division between them. All right, so you guys can see that that doesn't look quite as nice as it did when I, when I first cut them out and had them next to each other. So if I was going slower or if I had time to redo it, I'd probably redo it. But since this is a demo, I wanna get to the next part where I kind of put everything together, kind of show you guys that. This is not an exhaustive, demonstration of all the different types of coils you could make. These are just a couple ideas that I have in my head. You guys have different ideas than I do, but you have some of the same ones that I do too. And some of these ideas that I have, you might have had before you saw me do it. So don't feel like you're copying me. I won't think you're copying me. So I'm just going to start to kind of figure out how these are going to situate. That could work. So notice that there, there's space right here between these. If I angle this in though, that space goes away. If I bring them out, the space gets bigger. So depending on how you angle these will dictate how much, how many coils you need to fit in here to make it work. Let's just add this one first and let's kind of go from there. Cup this here as if it was just a normal coil and I'm going to blend the clay together so that it all becomes one. And actually the clay here on this coil is thicker than this. So I'm actually on this one, I'm gonna actually blend it up because I have a little bit more clay to work with. So I'd wanna try to keep it consistent if you're gonna blend down, blend down all the time. Usually the, the clay that you're adding is gonna be softer than the one below it. So blending down from the new coil uh, makes a lot more sense most of the time. Especially when you have your piece bagged up for like a day and you come back this next um, coil, the first coil you add on that next day is probably gonna need to be wet and scratched on. And the, the one you're adding to, the last one from the day before, is probably gonna be more firm, a lot more firm than it is now, of course, right? All right, so I've got one little decorative coil added on here, and now I wanna start adding some more. So I could do this one in here. Um, if I wanted to, I can actually change this one to be a little bit more like a square. And I can add that one to fit in there a little bit better. So I'm gonna do that. If your thumb starts getting like too big, like if it's growing, no. If your space gets too small for your thumb to fit in, that's what I'm trying to say. Then you can use a paintbrush with the back of it or something, and you could blend down and get that clay blended in. Don't worry if it makes a little bit of like um, kind of a scratchy mess there. Don't worry about it. Just get it blended first. And you wanna blend down and then you wanna blend to the one next to it too. So get these blended together. 
right here in the corner, it's really important that they are one. So what I like to do is on the inside part of it, not on the outside, I'll just kind of exaggerate that, that joint a little bit. Just really make sure that it becomes one because it might be a while before I put another coil right there and I don't want that to be an area where air can get in and cause it to divide. If you have an area that's not joined together all the way, when the air gets in there, you're gonna have a harder, crispier area. It's gonna be a lot more difficult to join that together later, especially when you've got other pieces that are connected. So you've got pieces here, pieces here, pieces here. How are you gonna join that together without pulling these ones apart? Okay, so you gotta think about that. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna smooth that. So now I've got that one joined in. And don't worry if it's kind of like not a perfect circle, not a perfect square or whatever. That wonkiness is gonna kind of start to create a rhythm, okay? But you know, uh, that's, that's variety right there, you know? If I wanted to, I could add a coil over the top like this. I think I'm gonna do that. So I can just put that coil right in right there. I'm gonna blend it down into the, uh, the layer below it. I'm gonna blend it together with the one next to it. And then I'm gonna kinda just eyeball this cut right here. If you didn't have one of these, you can use your, your wire tool. Just kind of like follow it down to right there. Take that off. And there we go. Now I can blend that down. Okay. All right. So then I would continue going around here and adding in these coils as I see fit. Now it's going in right here. That doesn't mean that the whole thing has to go in. If I wanted to, I could, I could make, I could make this go out. Okay. And I, I have this space right here. Well, why don't I just stick this one in? Why not? I can do that. Oh, that kind of looks cool. Okay, right now there's a lot of variety, but the rhythm is like right here. I need to get some of this rhythm going all, all the way around. So I think what I want to do is I want to hold off on adding these for a minute. I'm going to grab another piece of clay from over here. It's already in that shape that I want it to be. You guys will find out that, you know, when you're cutting clay out, the shape that you want to end up with is probably a pretty good shape to start with. Think about that as your cutting your clay out. Okay, this is a quick coil. It's not gonna be perfect right now. It's okay. Sometimes it's easier to handle less clay. All right, so I've got my, my coil pot. I wanna just add this right here and let it, let it kind of unify this right here, create some, some of this rhythm needs to kind of reach over here to this other part of my pot. And I think I'm gonna, just gonna twist it off right there. All right, so I'm gonna blend this. I'm gonna blend this piece in. Moment like this, some people wait a lifetime. Sha -na 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 -na. I'm gonna release my album soon. Mr. E's Karaoke Jams. Sha -na 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 -na. I made that up. That's not true. I'm not make. I don't have an album. All right. I need to put something in here. You know, cause it's just you know. Why don't I take this cinnamon roll and make it a triangular cinnamon roll? I 
think I made, I think I made it. I think I did it. Did I do it? Did I do it? I did it. Okay, so right here, it's kind of wiggling a little bit, or at least it was, but I'm gonna blend that together to make sure it's all one piece. Okay, so when you're looking at the inside, you guys can see that there are no seams. It's all one piece, okay? But on the outside, we've got all these coils making up the design. All right, and I got some space in here to work next. I can go ahead and maybe put this one right here or right here. You don't have to be doing shapes the whole way. I'm just kind of showing you, I wanted to show you a bunch of different shapes to start with, different shaped coils, just to kind of get you guys' imagination started. Because you guys, you know, just from that draw, those drawings you did last week, you guys can take those coils and try to mimic all of those shapes you did. I said shapes, I meant to say lines. Mimic all those lines you did. I don't mean to, co to be covering this right now. It's just the way that my arms are attached to my body. I guess I could do this. But now I'm blocking you with my hand. You can't see. This is secret, okay? Just kidding. Okay, you guys, I'm going really fast right now. So don't judge me on like how clean it is. Watch this. I have a little area right here that's kind of like a gap. I'm just gonna put this piece of clay in here. The clay I'm adding to it is soft and the clay that I just put in here is soft. So they're at the same level. They're both very plastic. So I can go ahead and just add it in. Alright. When I'm gonna finish up a session, I try to do it so that there's kind of like some some structure to it. There's it's clean um, it's all cleaned up on the inside, everything's blended. I don't want to end a session with unblended coils on the inside because those coils are gonna firm up. They will not be able to be blended as easily. And when I say as easily, I mean, it's gonna create issues because if you're really trying to like get in here and like smush the clay together and it's hard, you're gonna start pulling and putting pressure on all of these other joints and they're gonna wanna come apart. All right, so here's just Mr. Estrada's demonstration on how to get to this part. You know, I've got some other pieces that I could add in right now, okay? Um, but you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna start with that pinch pot, like I showed you, and um, you're gonna continue building. Of course, after your session, you know, if there's any soft clay, like this, <clears throat> just kinda give them a little CPR here on this wet sponge, and then add them back to your bag of clay. We don't wanna throw away clay. We wanna keep it soft, keep it workable, and, you know, keep using it. You're gonna build up seven to eight inches high between my two fingers right here, seven and eight inches. And we're not counting the pinch pot. We're counting where the coils start, the base of the coil. So I wanna see you do seven to eight inches tall worth the coils. Da 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 da. So you can kind of see that rhythm happening in there. It's kind of like, it's kind of like this. 